Yeah, hello, you're listening to Six Music. It's uh, me, Ross O'Hard. Hope you're very well indeed. Hope you're having a good Sunday morning. I'm here with John and Sam. Morning. Good morning. Hey, you got glasses on? Yeah, I thought I'd look intellectual today. Are they new? Uh, ish, yeah. It's failed, hasn't it? No, oh, you look great. I look like cosmetic. Clark Kent. Tell me I look like Clark Kent. Oh, yeah, cosmetic awesome. glasses. That's what's, what's all that about? <laughs> yeah, damn right. We know a comedian who we probably shouldn't name who wears them. Which one? Him. <laughs> oh, let's do it. No, we can't. You do it, though, because you're allowed. No, I can't. Honestly, no, you're, like, you're, like, untouchable amongst the stand-up world. <laughs> it's fine yeah. for I dangerous st- I still need Howard. to butt-kiss for a bit longer. Butt-kiss? I'll do the first name, you do the surname. Okay. Dan. No, let's not do this. <laughs> He's kind of... Fr- He's a friend of mine, anyway. Is he? Yeah. That's I'm... not what you said yesterday. Stop it, John. How, what a weird start to the show this is. But the point we're making is that he wears uh, cosmetic glasses, and that really is... That's a bad move, isn't it? When you mm. when you don't need to wear them, it just looks sad. Anyways, hope you're very well. Um, I wear cosmetic contacts. Do you? It's pretty pointless. Oh, there was a horrible story I remember reading years ago about a man who... Uh, What's going on? Our, our producer, <laughs> our producer Adam, <laughs> turned up with a bandana, looking pretty cool, staring at us watching the show. It's like we're being watched from all angles today. We've got three producers. How it's almost like they don't trust us here. Because yeah. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. But uh, there was a story about a guy who uh, was wearing contact lenses, um, and he got back from the pub, and he was so drunk it took him half an hour to take his contact lenses off, and then he realised he'd already taken them off, and he'd peeled off his eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's Sam Thomas laughing. I imagine the rest of the nation is feeling a little bit repulsed as you eat your cornflakes. I probably shouldn't have opened with that story. I can only apologise. I had a similar thing with my uh, boxer shorts last week. I had a similar thing with a condom once. <laughs> 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 that I've just officially got the finger. You, you, know, when, you know, whenever you see a finger <laughs> whirling around, that either means there's a helicopter present or best to carry on. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you're familiar with the show, you know what's going to happen. It's, uh, it's all the usual stuff. It's uh, Am I Normal, which is like a sort of a quirky... Well, you know all the little things you feel compelled to do? We'll email those in. We've had to, we had a great one uh, last week. What was that about that bloke that um, did your song? What was that? Oh, the Debenhams. Yeah, well, we'll get into that later. Basically yeah. what it is, email us on, what's the text? 64046. <laughs> and the email? Russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. I should know this by now. I've been doing this for <laughs> 12 weeks. Yeah, exactly. That, um, you can email or text us in with your Am I Normals, the little things you feel compelled to do, time travel, where you'd like to go and why, and uh, what you'd do if you were God, if you're an all-powerful deity. So those are the things coming up. Um, <clears throat> are we going to do a few other bits and pieces? We've also found, this is the most exciting news. Did you know this, Sam? John is officially now the first radio chef ever. This is amazing news. It is. Do you want to tell... Well, basically, last week, John put up on a recipe. Was it fish broth? It was, uh, yeah, chilli fish stew. Yeah. Mm-mm. Now, uh, we've had emails in from three people. One of them, Miriam, who uh, has emailed the show quite a lot. Big fan of John's work. Big fan. But uh, she's taken umbrage with uh, John's... Uh, because, basically, we put it out there as lonely food. She used the exact specifications and said it could feed four people. So she's put it to me and John that maybe John's got people in his room and that's why I'm not allowed to go in the room and eat the food with the mystery three people. Have you never noticed Winnie the Pooh has a red tinge around his mouth? I feed my teddies. Have you ever done that? No. Lies. No. Lies. No. Have you really done that? I make a big fish broth, though, Miriam. That's the beauty of it. You can have it again the next day. You have to be careful reheating rice. Make sure you cool it down nice and quick. But it's, I, there's nothing lonelier than making a tiny portion of something like a stew. You can, if you want just a meal for one, just have a steak or something, but a big stew. Have a steak or You were eating a pot noodle yesterday. That's big talk for a man who's, you know, just have a steak. I mean, that's what I do. Very often I have venison, maybe quail's eggs. You were eating pot noodle in shell suits. There's a place for pot noodle. The guy who invented uh, dried noodles died this week. Oh, let's all oh, take our hats off. off. That's an awkward <laughs> moment. <laughs> when they buried him, did they just put the water up to a specific level and put soy sauce? No, they don't bury people in water. Well, no, I thought it might be a link back to a pot noodle joke, but you've yeah. taken that quite literally. Yeah. Did you feel sad? Um, I only found out this morning. <laughs> I wondered why his emails had stopped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hope your your week at home has been fun and all that. How about you, Sam? What have you been up to? Pretty good, pretty good. I haven't been up to a great deal. It's been... <laughs> really? You yeah. surprised me. <laughs> yeah, it's odd, isn't it? You're I'm normally good. such an adventurous man. You well, know, you I stopped in. the running this week, so I decided instead... Have you ever been for a jog? Yeah, been... I have. It ends badly. It I, can't, ends really I genuinely badly. can't imagine. You. I, can, I can maybe imagine you jogging in like a gold velour sort of tracksuit. You know, one of those kind of suede ones. But well, I'll I... take you out with, with your bodysuit and I'll wear something 
golden velour and we can run in tandem. Well, we actually probably can't run in tandem. That's that's going to be a shame. You run with your bodysuit on and I'll, I'll run likes, 10 metres behind you. I'll tell you someone who likes a jog. Our friend here, Mr John Richardson. Morning. <laughs> He's been, oh, how sexy was that? That was absolutely fantastic. I like the idea that the nation was on tandem. It's going, who, who do you mean? Who do you mean? Who's this yeah. sort of sultry, sexy... Hi. Morning. Very different voice to the voice that you uh, gave yourself yesterday when you rang me up. That wasn't you me, t- Russell. That you, wasn't me. Do you want to tell everyone what you've been Russell doing? Russell received a celebrity call yesterday. He's been hanging around with celebrities this week because Russell's a celebrity this week. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I am quite literally <laughs> a celebrity this week. Well, what happened, Sam? You've been right? knocking about with Abby Titmus. I haven't right? been knocking about with Abby oh, Titmus. No. Russell Howard, Abby Titmus, shocker. It was, um, it was a very innocent moment. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, don't. <laughs> <That's not laughs> um, but what happened? I was at I was doing this uh, thing with uh, Rob Bryden. This TV I, show, mate. Uh, no, it's a panel show. The I don't know what it's called. It's on TV though, isn't it? Yeah, it's good fun. Um, and he's a very funny man. Rob Bryden's a real show off. He's like an uncle. He's great. He's like well, you were chatting about him with Ronnie Corbett, weren't you, over drinks? Last I wasn't. Week. See what happened, Sam. I'll explain <laughs> to you because John will leap on this. Um, I came home and said, "Hey, I tell you what's weird, right? It's Get, weird. Guess." Guess who? Uh, guess who said that she was a big fan of my work? Quite innocently, because it's quite funny, I think. And he went, "I don't know. I don't care. I'm eating pot noodle. Get out my face and watching darts." And I went, "Oh, it's interesting." Um, and I just very gently went, "Abby Titmus," and I left it at that. Moved on because it isn't. Oh, big, what it, rubbish! You phoned me up specifically because it isn't a big deal. I didn't. Here, John. Here, John. Who's a big fan of my work? Abby the Titmus. <laughs> I didn't call it Abby the Titmus. And then you said, aren't you Abby? And she went, yes, I am. Oh, yeah. And we all know that's that's that a... you can't respect the opinion of a woman who you know has said that to John Leslie in the past. <laughs> How's Leslie I'm a big fan of your work. The way you spin that wheel, <laughs> I don't actually spin the wheel. Well, whatever. <laughs> that's a fair point, actually. That is, but I, I guess that's how you think. But by that token, that means uh, if an audience, you know, finds you funny, and th- if they've just seen, say, a comedian who wears... Mean, if an audience finds me funny you having a pop mate no i'm not having a pop i'm simply referring to uh let me think what uh no <laughs> lancaster no you did very well then yeah um i don't think i've ever seen you die at a gig you're very good uh chipping him chipping him yeah well that was horrific oh get stuffed <laughs> you weren't even there get stuffed somebody look at that let's applaud him that was proper bbc6 music ordinarily he'd have properly gone through there but he's told me to get stuffed anyway so i made a light sort of innocuous comment about um abby titmus liking me left it at that then right? hung up D- i didn't hang up and then right <laughs> The other day I said I quite like an Audi TT. I get a phone call, right? <laughs> I get a phone call from him that just goes, Hello, it's Melanie Sykes here. I'm like, hello, Melanie. How are you? Not bad. Not I had bad. nothing to do with this. Absolutely, right? And, and he was doing quite a good impression of Melanie Sykes, but being quite sort of luring, saying that he was going to get his floppers out. And, you know, he was doing, oh, a new, this... doing a new TV show that involved decking. And for that, he needed to talk to Charlie Brooks. Dimmock. Uh, to Charlie Dimmock. So Not that I was there. I assume that's who she meant. So he then pops it onto my flatmate, John, who did possibly the word, Hello! Charlie Dimmock here! And he just sat there going, one comment, and you're getting bullied throughout oh, the entire didn't. house. I've that's been bullied new, all this week. That's the new gardening show that's coming up, isn't it? Charlie Dimmock and Melanie Sykes called Tits in the Garden. <laughs> I read about it in the press this week, and I believe they want you to be in the first series. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's that's going to be quite a show. Tits dicks in the garden. <laughs> that's, I've had a very weird week in general, because um, I've, had, I've had about five people coming up to me, sidle up to me on tubes, just go, I'm an elf, you know. So I've had, from which is from Mock the Way, I don't know if you've seen it, but it... Sort not of, a big fan of it, to be honest. Not a big fan. A bit, uh, you've you've bit been dark. asked to be on it. That's, that's all I good. haven't. Yeah, I'm trying to get you on. You've tried to get me on. That's yeah. very different to me being asked to be oh, on it. I'd love to see you. Imagine that. How great I believe be? you've been made king. Oh, no? ha- well, no, I said the word king two weeks ago, so same thing. No, I've asked it? them to get you on it. How great would that be? Have John on, on uh, you know, what is supposedly a satirical show, and I'll just bait so- him. Supposedly a satirical show. Well, it's not really. You're implying I'm not satirical. No, I'm implying what I do if you and me were on a major panel oh, show right. on the BBC <laughs> is wind you up until you said something horrific. Yeah. <laughs> well, ask yourself who's the only person who's sworn on this show. Oh, get TV's Russell Howard. Right. Anyways, so um, so Sam, that started off with you jogging, yeah. and it's ended up with uh, me and John having a lovely argument. <laughs> but that's always nice. So yeah. um, so what else? What have you been up to? Well, this week? I wound up getting totally obsessed with uh, a game I started playing two weeks ago called Dictator Top Trumps, where you take about 44 despots and you give them all points and you basically play Top Trumps with them. I've got so obsessed, I've actually tried to make this happen over the internet. And I've now got delusions of grandeur that maybe we could put it on the Six Music site or something, which would be amazing. You'd have everyone at home playing it. 
Must Everyone be. at home playing it. Who have you been playing this with on the internet? My girlfriend. Your girlfriend? That's about it. How, oh, how have I not got a girlfriend? And you've got one and you're playing dictator top trumps with her. That is a sad world, it's true. If I had a chick, I'd treat her right. Yeah, do potato prints with her. I'd do potato prints, yeah. yeah. Maybe make those Rice Krispie Capes, cornflake cakes. Take a Rice Krispie zoo. Capes? Yeah, Is cakes. that what you use Rice for Krispie flying cakes. in cereal land? And there's strutting <laughs> Sam, wandering about in a golden velour. Hey, him. but you got the call from Titmus, so I mean, that, that, that's a whole other I can't go out with Abby Titmus. Imagine that, imagine Abby Titmus really Why can't you go flat. out with Abby Titmus? Because she'd get round and go, oh, so are we going to do something really filthy? And I'd go, oh, no, we're just going to watch The Goonies. Oh, she's probably into the Goonies. I'll give her a call. Right. <laughs> oh, I won't. <laughs> hey, you guys. Don't do that. Not when we're sexing, Abby. Um, <laughs> this is... Time uh, to see One-Eyed Willy. John. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apologise to the people. <laughs> oh, that's nothing wrong with that, is there? Everyone's shaking their head. That's a perfectly legitimate pun. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. John, um, it's quite interesting. We had an email last week um, from uh, a few emails and texts from people who were upset that you'd had a go at uh, the Nate Dogg song, I think, Oh We. I think Ooh-wee. you'll find it's Ooh We. Ooh We. I apologise, Nate. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, how scary is that? I've had a pop at Nate Dogg and the paper just fell off. Yeah, that must mean something. Yeah, he's a powerful boy. That was ODB. <laughs> that was ODB. He moved that there. ODB? Oh, dirty bastard. Who's that? He's dead. Is he? He's a dead rapper. Sorry about that. Shh, he's probably in the studio. Probably. Probably. Let's move on. Okay. So, yeah, people have complained that I'm having a pop at the music. Now, this week, tune in to hear John Richards and pretend to like everything. But what's nice, um, I've just, uh, during uh, during one of our links, as you may know if you listen to the show, as soon as we stop talking, John leaves uh, the studio <laughs> and goes for a strut around uh, Six Music. <laughs> I've just found him outside talking to Adnan, who hosts... The music show afterwards, and I just came into the conversation. Have you heard? If you believe that, yeah, they've had a go at me for not saying what for what I like. I don't like the songs. We don't like it. I'm gonna. All right, Russ, what are you doing? So he's literally been <laughs> sorting around, going up to me when he doesn't know. I went to get a <laughs> cup of tea. And how's that gone, John? Uh, well, the tea machine's not working, so all I've got is a cup of sugar and a tea sachet in it. And those magic beans. Yeah. I haven't got to. I've st- I haven't had a drink since Wednesday, and I've drunk a lot of tea, and I've been in a good mood all week, and that's ne- that's never happened. Two days in a row in a good mood. So I was in a good mood yesterday, and I thought, oh no, because now I'm wasting it on today. Tomorrow I'm going to be in a stink for the show, and he's going to go, oh, you're always in a stink on a Sunday. Dude, but I'm still in a good mood. Oh, that's fantastic. That is good. Must mood. be tea. It, it must, must be, be the tea. tea. Uh, there was a story actually this week um, about uh, apparently the, the German people say that, <laughs> scientists even they say that uh, if you uh, if you put, if you put milk into your tea that spoils it. Is that, that right? Yeah, that ruins the antioxidant quality of the tea. I think that's rubbish. Exactly. The Germans. I mean, what's their? They eat liver for breakfast. They can't really shout about what to. <laughs> <laughs> Not like you know they haven't just ripped it from an animal. They cook it in that, and like brat and honnig. It's horrible. Yeah. Liver, so they, they liver, know? bread and honey they eat. I tell you what, we we went out for a meal the other day. I got a proper kick in. Ah, oh, right. It's so. horrible, right? Um, we went. We we were going to go to the um, what's it called? Fat the duck. fat Police. duck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is this quite exciting, like uh, restaurant where they have like snails, ice cream, and stuff like that. So we were quite. I tried to book it. it went badly, and uh, <laughs> then I passed it. Hello. Over. Yeah. All right. How are you like doing? To book a table for me and Tabby Itmus. I mean, Abby Titmus. I didn't say that. Friend. Seriously, because you know there are people that listen to this show that that, that I quite that, like and I want. Want to to like to, me. You want to fancy you? No. Go on. All right. Who's the only one who's just got a fan letter? From no, not a the lov- only one. Yeah. How many letters were there, Russell? There were two, but the one that you were given was longer. Sorry about this, Sam. We probably shouldn't have mentioned this. <laughs> um, we, uh, we we got fan mail. Nothing for you. I read over your shoulder. Oh, did you? Yeah, he's <laughs> in on it. Fantastic. I know the, I know the deal. Oh, he actually got a separate one that went, Pol Pot's getting it. <laughs> Just a miscellaneous. But, uh, yeah, we went to this restaurant. It was horrible. I got slammed by some lady. Why did you get slammed? Because, right, we went for this... Now, you'll be able to help me at home, right? You know when you're at a restaurant and you, you don't fancy a Coke, you don't fancy, like, a, sort of an alcoholic drink, you think, oh, I fancy some tea. I'll, I'll have a lovely bit of tea. So I said to this sort of uh, quite attractive French girl who was working there, I said, can I have some tea, please? I like, you know when you get really nervous about ordering stuff? So I went, tea, please? And she kind of raised one eyebrow and went, with your meal? Like that. And I went, y- yeah. 
And she looked at me and went, would you like some bread and jam with that? And her eyes just went, dickhead. <laughs> and it was, she just sort of sat there going, she's just kicked me. And then my friend Mark went, he probably wants some frothed milk with that as well. And she went, probably some sugar in that as well. What's his problem? Properly kicked by her all the way. And then every time she came back, she had a new one. She was unbelievable. Yeah, she was really great. I've got your rice krispies, sir. They got snack a crackle and the pup. Yeah, exactly. We've just sat there getting in. And you know when you getting a proper kicking all the way through the meal, it was horrible. You it was an expensive snap. restaurant, though. You can't pull that sort of stuff in an expensive restaurant. Have a cup of tea. You can. Order you sat there and took water it. Or something. You sat there and took it. You didn't snap once. You didn't punch her. You didn't leap on her. You, nope. You... When I get angry, what I tend to do is think about uh, previous episodes of TV's Naughtiest Blunders that I've, <laughs> that I've seen in my head. And someone shouting at me, and I imagine Fern Britain swearing. And uh, that tends to oh, maybe Wincy Willis slipping up on a banana. And I find, I tell you what, if you watch TV's Naughtiest Blunders, two things. A, you're very lonely. And B, it's brilliant. It perks you up. It's, there's nothing better than seeing, like, Philip Sco- Schofield... Like a, a word pop into his mouth that he never thought he'd truly say. It's not oh. as good as uh, you've been framed. Oh, I don't know. It's good. It, it's, it's good when you like. There was a, there was a, there was one the other day a golf commentator who couldn't say Sevi Ballesteros, and it was, and he looked like he was going to kill him. He was like Ballesteros, but 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 oh god, what's his name, Tom? Ballester, oh come on! And I started shouting at himself, come on, Todd, Ballester, oh, but. But why can't he be called Smith? And it was just, like over and over and over. And a little old Welsh lady who was who, who they were trying to do an interview with her. And basically, the way the interview had to go was, okay, did you enjoy the game? Yes, I enjoyed it very much. That was all they had to say. But she kept on going, did you enjoy the game? Very much. Was that okay? And she must have done that about five times. And she just had this lovely old face. It was terrific. Lovely stuff. That was a bit of block party. Before that, a bit of dodgy. That's great, that dodgy song. Oh, I re- picked that this week. Well done, John. Listeners, thanks. It really takes you back to 1996. That. Is that when it was released? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was released in 97. Where was are it? you going, time traveller? Well... Oh, that'd be that great, was when it? I first met Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> there was a story about him this week, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, Hasn't absolutely. he been pole dancing or something? Well, yeah, that's apparently well, obviously not TV, him. You can see him pole dancing and brandishing an AK-47. Yeah, obviously it's not him. We should stress that. It well. isn't. Although that... Yes. <laughs> we can neither confirm nor deny that. We pr- pretty much, I can deny that. I can pretty much confirm it wasn't <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi. It'd be great, though. Re- great reincarnation to come back as a dancer. Something to do if you're a ghost. Yeah, that'd be bleak, wouldn't it? <laughs> Imagine that, that'd be like a film. The pole dancer, she's going to come back to do her last dance. Like that, just so she can do like a really full-on, like, grindy, yeah. it's just vapour and... You'd have to watch that with a potato masher, eh? Is, yeah, what? what? Didn't you watch, uh, <sighs> Didn't you watch The Ring and get so scared you had to go into the kitchen and get utensils and there weren't enough knives so you had to hold a potato masher in case ghosts came in? Yes. So that's what I meant by that. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get quite scared. Um, I've been known to panic. I remember once... Mash those ghosts up. John, please. I remember once I uh, I broke into my friend's house because um, uh, I couldn't get in, so I went through the window. And uh, just as, and then I couldn't be bothered to go up and say hello to him, just, so I just sat in the front room watching telly. It was when I was at university, right? And about ten minutes later one of them came downstairs and they heard noises and the door just slammed open as my friend Andy Burrs just goes like that to sort of take me on and he'd obviously (laughs) grabbed the first thing he could find which was a clothes horse like that so he'd just been walking down the corridor went it's a burglar so I'll fold him to death it was brilliant and he was like it was just great he was in his pants going get out of my house and then realised it was me just holding a clothes horse nice pun Hey, Sam, do we have an interesting email? We had an interesting email. It says, uh, I found another one of those long white hairs growing out of my right side. It's about three inches long. Should I pull it out or keep it in? Well, Santa, the uh, a three-inch long grey hair, or white mm. hair, how old is white she? White hair. Uh, she doesn't specify. She does add a kiss. That's I would fr- say... Oh, lovely. It's nice to have that kiss. Pull it out, but yeah. then three inches, That's quite. you might be turning into a unicorn. Mm. What? They've got big, long white tails, haven't they? Yeah, that's some kind. Three inches is an unhealthy length of uh, chest hair. A minute ago, she's a little bit... right side. A minute ago, ago, she's a little bit worried that maybe she's ageing. You've now got her transforming into a mythical beast. That's better than getting old. (laughs) <laughs> that'd be a, I'd rather turn into you, a unicorn. Imagine you as a doctor, there's a, some, somebody's very ill, and you think, oh, they're going to die, I might as well make a lie up. Well, <laughs> you're going to transform into a griffin. So, 
Mm. On the plus side. Be an improvement on troll. Hey, stop crying. I don't think I'll ever be a doctor. For many reasons. I often <laughs> thought if I was a doctor, it'd be quite good fun. Um, you know when you have to do any kind of examination to where you put a glove on? Just to flick some music that just goes, Well, I don't know why I came here tonight. <laughs> you get them properly terrified. My sister can't listen to that. It makes her faint. I can watch. She's squeamish. Really? Mm. Or just maybe, oh, if, it, pranks if you're a doctor, you could do this as well. <laughs> just have a sip of, like, whiskey before someone comes in so it smells like it's on your breath. <laughs> And then they, and then ruffle your hair up, and then when they come in, just go, what? That'd be good fun. I don't think uh, pranks are a big part of being a doctor. That's a fair point, but I bet they do muck around. Although, it, it's the sort of thing, if you ever did want to stop being a doctor, yeah. and you thought, what's a cool way of handing in my resignation? Yeah. You would, like the guy who plays Tigger in uh, Disney World in Florida this week, clearly has had enough of his job, <laughs> yeah. and decided, shall I just go to my boss and say I'm bored of being Tigger? Nah, I'll punch a kid. So he was having a picture taken with a 14-year-old in the big Tigger outfit and just decked him. That's a fair point. Yeah. In fairness, going back to the doctor link, a lot of uh, doctors become comedians. Yeah. Harry Hill. Go on. Uh, doctor Funny. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Phil, else? Phil Hammond, is he... Phil. Uh, the goodies, they were all doctors, apparently, which is how they're written down. They've got doctorates. They've been to university, but they're not doctors. Graham Garden was a doctor, was he? He's mental. I tell, and Oddie. Oddie's mad. Have you seen Oddie recently? Well, you do go around for dinner at their uh, house. Oh, there we go again! <laughs> we're supposed to be doing Am I Normal. What were yours this week, anyway? Um, in fact, let's do that after a song, shall we? Um, yeah, let's, uh, we, we had some really good ones in. Let's read out one of theirs to entice people to read in. This is a great one, this. Um, Am I normal? This is from Jonathan Preston. Uh, this is lovely, this. Long-time listener, first-time emailer. Lovely start to an email. In fact, I feel like Wogan. Before I can go to sleep, I have to erect a force field around my bed. I first have to touch the four corners of my bed, starting at the upper left, then lower right, lower left, and finally upper right corner. But he's called it crooner, and that's, of course, he's like on the... He's <laughs> got Judy Tony Garland Bennett hanging the down corner exactly. of his bed. Exactly. I'm going to sleep now. Please, let me have some milk. Good um, night. I then have to cross my arms and whisper, force field on. The force field is now activated and radiates about ten inches from my bed to protect me from all evil. Has he got a girlfriend? Before I can leave my bed, no matter what, I first have to turn off the force field by touching the upper left corner of the bed and whispering, force field off. If I were ever to step out of bed before turning it off, the force field would shatter from the pressure applied from the inside and I'd be left defenceless in the future. Jonathan, it doesn't say whether he's got a girlfriend, but I'll tell you what, if he has got a girlfriend, she's protected all the way throughout the evening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're both in real trouble. But even that chick with the three-inch hair, because there's a, there's a force field that goes to ten inches, so that can grow to ten inches and that'll still be fine. Yeah. He sounds great. Or just get a Remington and, you know. Oh, just pull it out. We've had one in from someone in Lancaster. I'm yeah. from Lancaster. You are. Go on, So John. technically, it could be my brother. Uh, there's a guy called <laughs> Owen who says, I eat a meal one part at a time. For a roast, it's veg, then potatoes, then Yorkshire's, then meat. This forces me to eat it all as I'm saving my favourite till the last. But that's a tricky little beast, that, because if you fill up on roast veg in Yorkshire's, then you're too full for the meat. <laughs> oh, it's a minefield, isn't it? It's food hour here on Six Music. So, uh, we're talking about Am I Normal. What's yours this week, mate? Um, I will convince myself, but this, this looks bad now because I've been teasing you all morning, but I convince myself people are famous. You know, when you look at someone on the train and you stare at them for about ten seconds and then you look away yeah. for a minute and then when I look back, I've forgotten that I've already looked at them and I recognise them. And I only recognise them from the fact I looked at them a minute ago, but then I think, oh, I recognise him. Is he off... Is he off the telly or does he work in a shop? It's like that amazing Mitch Hedberg joke, isn't it? Dude, I saw you on the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got this really... I don't know if you've heard of Mitch Hedberg. If you haven't, if you're at home, oh, that's... If I can offer you one tip, go uh, on the internet now, search Mitch Hedberg. He's absolutely brilliant. He's uh, he's dead, unfortunately. He's one of the best comedians that I've ever heard. I've ne I never saw him. He's one of those really... He, like I said, classic. He died. And then a friend of ours called Ben introduced us one night. Two... Um, me and John are comics. We, we were back at his old skanky bed, Sid. And he doesn't live there anymore. He's doing very well for himself. Um, and we were sat there. And it's always really awkward when another comedian goes... Oh, listen to this because you you don't really want to enjoy it you know it's very difficult listening to jokes it's like here's a joke Ugh, god what if it doesn't work and we listened to it for about a minute and started laughing it was brilliant wasn't it very very good he's got he's my favorite joke of his um is off stage i'm a mumbler i like to mumble a lot so i'll be walking with a friend of mine and he'll be like what are you saying and i'll mutter it and then I'll say it a little bit louder, and he was like, louder. But really, it's just some insignificant stuff that I'm saying, only now I'm yelling, that tree is far away. 
wonderful man. What a funny guy. But yeah, go out and listen. So, what was your Am I Normal, John? It was, yeah, it was a bit like... Famous uh, people. And so, have you ever... Have you ever gone up to them and said anything else? No. I did go up to Anthony Head on the train once. Did you? Yeah, really? it was when I was with my last girlfriend. She wanted his autograph, and I didn't want to go over because it was a little bit embarrassing. Yeah. So uh, the only piece of paper we had was a music flyer that I'd drawn rude pictures all over. <laughs> so I had to go over and uh, and get him to sign a thing I'd drawn, like a bishop with his willy out and stuff like that. And I had what, to he get probably... him to sign that because she said she'd never talk to me again if I didn't. Because that's what women do to me. And did he just do a little <laughs> speech bubble that went, it's me, Anthony Head. To be to fair to him, he signed it. Uh, all the best. Uh, this picture is very weird. Love, Anthony Head. That's perfect. That gives you something to do. It's very awkward when you're doing an autograph and you just got to put your name. If there's a backstory, you can add to it, I yeah. imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they say. Um, hey, how old were you when you signed your first autograph? Uh, 20... It's so weird that it's so freaky because then that's kind of in your weird little teenage way. There's a little part of your brain going, oh, so much just half your autograph, and you get all excited and forget to write your name. And before you know, so you've put autograph. Timmy Mallet, and they're like, you're not Timmy Mallet, dear the Titmus. Oh, stop it! What's <laughs> your am I normal, Sammy? I rate the coins in my pocket. I rate, I rate the coins. Rate the coins by shininess and by design, and I'll dictate what I spend according to how clean they are, how fresh they are. And I've got the ranking Or whether here. you're buying Christmas presents, in which case you won't get any of them out. <laughs> just get the coppers. Yeah, oh, just... so it's bad to this, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take you down. Well, I'll read out the order for, for the hell of it. Five pence, two pence, ten pence, one pence, fifty pence, two pounds, and one pound coin is officially the best coin one in the country. One pound is better than a two pound. Yeah. It's Not the happy. weight... It's the way. The one pound with the dragon on it is the best one pound, but a one pound with the rubbish crown thing on it is rubbish pound. <laughs> oh, John's <laughs> actually made me laugh until snot came out of my nose, which is never good, but it's a good job on radio. What's your am I normal, Russell Howard? Thank you very much. Mine is, whenever I get in my car, I get a little bit worried. If I've parked it in the dark, um, I get a little bit worried. I'll get in my car really quickly. I'll leg it from wherever I am to my car, shut it, lock the doors, and then I'll put my hands behind... Um, behind the seats. As is good driving practice. To check if there are any ghosts or burglars lurking in my car. I find myself doing that a lot. The other day, I, I, I was halfway through, I was driving, and I'd been in my car for two minutes in the dark, and I honestly thought in my head, oh, God, I haven't checked. It's probably a bloody burglar in my... I don't know who I think is going to be. A burglar in your car? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would a burglar steal in your car, apart from the two metres of filth that is in your Pants. front passenger footwell? Yeah, there's all kinds. What have you done to... Have, have you tidied your car, or have you listed, lifted the carpet up and put it on top of the filth? And it is literally at the level of your seat. So you sit down, and then the footwell is up to that height in cops, smoothie... Uh, Oh, oh, and you're not stinks. my real dad. Who would you like to meet? If you could meet anyone, who would you meet? Uh, well, uh, I'm going Rufus Wainwright without a doubt. Yeah, on. well, I was going to say Anthony, but then I heard, oh, imagine that. Imagine I heard you, he's a bit. You, Anthony, me and Rufus out for a bit of dinner. That'd be terrific, wouldn't it? Yeah. Although, knowing our like, you'd probably get on with Rufus and I'd get on with Anthony. Yeah, that'd be how it would work, wouldn't it? And then some waitress would come up and go, oh, I see you've brought uh, him along. I tell you what, it'd all go well if we had the garlic we had at the, at the restaurant this week. Oh, there was a lovely moment. John, John's one of my favourite friends um, for, for, for many reasons. But the I'm slipping down the rankings, but I'm still holding place. Oh, you're definitely top, top two, I'd say. Right, thanks. Um, but Who's the, number one? I can't tell you that. Tell me. I'll take him out. Noel Edmonds. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. I hate I've him. been pulling my trousers off and everything. <laughs> you have, yeah. I've I haven't worked. shaved for a month. I've been wondering about that. <laughs> I've been acting as talentless as possible. But you do that. You do actually pull... He pulls his trousers up. He gets all funny. Um, we had a Christmas party a little while ago. At Christmas. <laughs> it was probably the best time for them. <laughs> um, and that he, one we had in June. Yeah, not good. That wasn't that bad. Yeah. I dressed up as a reindeer. I thought it was a football... <laughs> but he... Pulled his trousers up to about his nipples, tied his belt, went, right, ready for party! And started clapping. Party, where's party? Is party ready for me? Because I'm ready for party. And um, and a few people arrived, and they were going, why has he got his trousers up? So no, they weren't. They were. No, they weren't. There was a point when uh, Keris and my sister were tugging your trousers down. That was something different, though. That was sexual magnetisma. You were on the f you were on the floor, on the fridge, kind of going, why is my chocolate fountain being ridiculed? That isn't sexual magnetita, or what have you called it? <laughs> magnetita, what's that? The, the only thing is, I use a belt for what it was designed for, which is holding your trousers up. You use a belt as a fashion accessory for people to look at 
while they're looking at your boxer shorts what's and the crack of your back. What's fashionable about that belt? There's nothing fashionable about that. But... Everything about you is fashionable. Your trousers around your knees. It's very trendy. <laughs> my trousers around my knees? Yeah. You wear, that's the trend. I've seen it. People you... walking down the street I'm listening not trendy. to hippity hoppity music. I'm not trendy. I'd, I'd equate my trend to about 2001. The snag is, you dress like a man who's had his allotment stolen by a rival. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's how you dress, like, and that's how you take photos. Turnip chic. Yeah, turnip chic. <laughs> Sam has Bilbo Baggins chic. I think I carried off adequately. You really look wonderful. No and, more and, and a lot of people are big into your voice. Uh, I'll be honest, there's rivalry on this show um, in terms of what we're going to do um, after it. Because John is convinced that you're going to get voiceover work. And he's very angry about it. Because he would like to earn, let's be honest, easy money from going, uh, what would you advertise? Anything. Absolutely <laughs> anything. Well, let's do that. If there's, if there's any, like, you know, uh, businessmen or whatever, and they want their their product advertised, then... Kanye West's new album. I'll do the voiceover oh, for the great. commercial. Hey, you probably like hip-hop like me. If you do, get hold of this or knock your socks off. Drop tit to bar, my mother. <laughs> Drop tit to bar. That'll be great, just to see you uh, with your trousers right up, kind of going, <laughs> oh, this is oh, too tight, <laughs> and then just falling over. You and Joe Wiley, eh? I'll advertise, I'll advertise anything I use or would use. That, that's that's got to be your rule on adverts, hasn't it? If Hello, you would use. my name's John Richardson, and this is a flannel. I yeah, I was given flannels. I never really used them. I've be, I use a squeegee now. Those but that, let's be honest, that bloke, the, that bloke that gave you flannels was a bit weird, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise it was a move. No, it was a bit <laughs> odd that. He just came up to us in a pub and went, you need washing. And John took. <laughs> that'd, be, wouldn't that be, that'd be the creepiest thing ever, wouldn't it? Just some random man in a cart you in a pub go, You need cleaning. Hey, what are you on about? You're oh, probably... you're dirty, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's taking it as far as you can. <laughs> what were we talking about? I don't know. What about something? Voiceover. We that's still oh, talking yeah. about voiceover. Sam's going to blatantly get loads of voiceover work. Yeah, you'll get paid for just I'm indiscriminate having a voice. as well. Yeah. I'll advocate war. I'd get. I'd just talk. Imagine if you just got. That, that's your talent. You were born with that. Just a voice. I do a voiceover for TV's naughtiest blunders. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be. I saw animals do the funniest things. I can. I'd do that as well. Yeah, I'd yeah. love that. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to control myself. <laughs> Look at that. It's done. <laughs> I saw something that should have been on TV's naughtiest blunders in the gym. Um, really cheered me up. This. Um, Mr. Was, Motivator is on the treadmill. It, it wasn't Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Motivator on the treadmill, and uh, he realises he had a big dinner. Um, it, was, it, it wasn't that, but. <laughs> But um, what happened? In clan. There was a there was a little kid who uh, sometimes the uh, the dads bring their kids into the gym to get changed and that. And there was a little kid hiding in the locker, and his dad didn't know that he'd done it. But he kind of climbed. He's sort of about four or whatever, and he climbed into the locker and shut himself. And you could hear a very faint <laughs> like that. So I kind of put. Um, you know, I, I was looking. I made sure I was sort of like semi dressed. Because you don't want to be... Yeah. Anyway, so I, I sort of had my jeans on. I was kind of thought, oh, this looks fun. And then it was brilliant because he just went, boo, opened the drawer. And two men, including his dad, didn't know that he'd hidden. They were both naked. They screamed, toppled into each other and kind of fell over. And there was this mess of kind of old naked men flesh, right? And this little kid was surveying what he'd done, knocking these men to the floor, looked really proud of himself. And his dad started telling him off. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, he goes, what have I told you about acting off in public? People could have got hurt. And this kid disarmed him brilliantly by just going, Daddy, your willy's moving. And it was just this unbelievable moment of just kind of... It was brilliant. But you can't really laugh at that. And the kid was just giggling away. And it was obviously... like the, You know the little games you play when you're a kid? His game is obviously just, when Daddy goes to the gym, I'm going to hide in the locker. That's what I do, that's my move. And it made me think about all the little games that you used to play. Like, like when I was, me and my brother used to play a game called Air Hock, right? When we were about 11, and the aim was to get like a table tennis uh, bat and a ball, and you just had to smack it at one another's head. And we called it Air Hock, and uh, if you connected with his forehead, you, I would scream, Air Hock! Brilliant fun. We should do that. Let's eat. Can you remember any of the ones you used to do when you were a kid? Uh, mine were really boring. I used to invent games to escape boredom, like uh, Yellow Pages Quiz. Hey, I'll tell you <laughs> what we should do. We should get people to email or text in. Text 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with the little kind of... It can't be a real sport. Let's do it so it's like, you're not allowed, but the things that you do, either when you're bored or that you used to fabricate when you were a kid, the little kind of sort of weird household games that you had or sports. Go on, so what was yours? The Yellow Pages? Yellow Pages quiz, yeah. where you have to sort of... I'm quiz master, and you'll ask Obviously. questions like, uh, you know, how many plumbers do you think there are in Newcastle? Oh, I can imagine you, eight, eight about five, putting on a suit, 
and yeah. like doing it so you've got a little like a cutaway card. Yeah. Maybe getting your, your mate Lee to warm up the crowd, which is your mum in the kitchen, and yeah. then you just burst in, hello, mother, how are you? And just like turning, <laughs> pointing at the various people around the kitchen, and then just kind of turning and going, right, our first question for you, a mother, and maybe Lee holding onto the microwave so that it makes a binging noise whenever uh, they get yeah. one right. Well, you've thought this all out, haven't you? No, I've, I've never played that game, but I can imagine you in that role. Yeah. And your mum getting it wrong, and you going, wrong, Lee, punch her. <laughs> Punch her, Lee. <laughs> punch my mum, Lee. No, I don't want to do it. Punch my mum, Lee. I'm going to carry on saying this. Yeah, I know. Listen, I'm just staring at you, and yet here you go. Oh, she on. listens. She listens. I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Richardson. Um, that was a skit. Um, I can only apologise. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday morning. So the Yellow Pages game. How about you, Sam? Oh, I played a game which involved shoveling as many Maltesers into my head, um, head, head, <laughs> mouth, as is humanly possible. It ended with obesity. Did it? Mm, absolutely. The other one. I'd have thought uh, charges of racism as well. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Evil. Evil. <laughs> Was it so you used to just eat Maltesers? That's not a game. No, you had to. You had to count them one by one. You do the same thing with Pringles, well, or crisps of the time. There were no Pringles in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> you said there were uh, no bloody Pringles. Not in the back 80s. then, no. Well, there was was Cole and Margaret Thatcher. Right, we were doing uh, sports. Uh, what have we got, boys? We had any texts or emails? Belly in? bouncing is our first attempt. Stand on a largest rug, put your hands behind your back, and you have to push your opponent off the rug by using the force of your belly alone. Really? Mm-hmm. That sounds pretty cool. How about you, Johnny Fan? There's some quite violent ones. <laughs> yeah. You seem to have started it off with that uh, that game, which is basically flinging a ping pong ball. Someone says, I once played a game of head cricket. One football, one stump. You have to smash it with your head. So, you know, let, let's have a health and safety warning here. Nice games. Like, I, I play horse on the motorway. When you're driving on a long journey, if you see a horse, point at it and shout Oh, he horse. does, which is absolutely... That's a point. Absolutely terrifying the first time you go on a car journey with him and you don't really know him that well and you're travelling to do a gig and he suddenly starts horse what <laughs> what are we doing and horse 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 terrifying cracking did- game though it's, it's, it's as if someone has strategically placed the horses around the country because yeah. it's always a close game always what's, a cracking game what's horse. lovely about it you you think that's just a, you know something that John does it's just a, a quirky little thing that he's got but uh, when you're actually in a car with uh, his mum and you're driving along and you hear her go horse you realise that it's a Richardson family trait. It's lovely. <laughs> we went to see cats in Liverpool and we got a coach there and we were playing horse on the coach and I saw one on the far side, which is a bonus points because you wouldn't expect anyone to see it. So I pointed and swivelled and shouted horse. And you're on a coach full of old women. You're bound to be pointing at one of them. And that created a very <laughs> awkward moment. Oh, I heard a lovely thing on the tube yesterday. There was a load of old ladies. Um, I actually wrote it down. It really made me laugh. Um, they were all giggling. There was about sort of five of them. It's a really heartwarming sight to see a load of old ladies giggling on a tube. And they had really wrinkly faces. It was brilliant. And uh, one of them, they finished, they did that <sighs> laugh at the end. And then went, of course, that's the great thing about close relationships. You don't have to be polite. And the other one went, yes. And she went, it means you can talk about willies and that. And then her friend went, Jude, you are naughty. And Jude looked at her and went, I know. And they started laughing again. It was a brilliant moment, sort of surrounded by the uh, aggression of London. There were just these five giggling little old ladies who were going, she said willies, are very good, are very good. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, uh, you whore roulette is always fun in the common room at school. You type in you whore or words to that effect in a text message, press send and scroll through all your contacts, hold down the scroll and don't look at, uh, and then don't look and text to whoever happens to be the so person you again, highlight on. Reading out, so basically they put the words you whore and then they send it to anyone in their phone. Randomly scroll down the, the, the address list <laughs> and then click. Apparently that's this too this, dangerous, yeah, dangerous. It? Let's do it now. In these days of nan mob and all that. Get, get, oh. your, get your phones out. Let's have a game of that. Right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shouldn't have our phones on in the studio. Yeah, it's all right, but for a bit of fun we can do it. You've got to write you whore. Yeah. Or should we change it? Is that a bit full on? Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, how about, like, let's change it. You, you bum monkeys, don't you? <laughs> or is that... That's worse. <laughs> you that's bum just... monkeys is fine. Um, all right. Let's, uh, uh, whore isn't in my diction. It comes up with you who's... Don't put that in. That's, no. you know, especially if you text it to someone in Scotland, it means the same thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My favourite word that comes up in your phone dictionary is ennui. 
Ennui comes up when you're typing enough. And I love the fact that ennui is in a phone dictionary. That's right, right. I don't go. imagine anyone's ever used it. Right, I've put you whore into my phone. <laughs> here we go. Who sent this uh, email in, by the way? Uh, it was Claire. And right. apparently she sent it to a history teacher. All right, let's see if I'm we... just going to put swine. Oh, but come on. If you're playing it, There's you're a lot of stuff going on in the Richardson family at the moment. I don't want anyone getting <laughs> disturbed on a Sunday morning with a text message saying, you know. Oh, how great would it be <laughs> if it's just like my dad gets it? Like that. So uh, what have I got to do? Just scroll, hold just scroll it. Well, I'm holding now. it now. Yeah. I know a lot of people though, so I'm probably still on A. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm I'm moving around. I don't know who I've sent it to. Russell, uh, stop now. Uh, we, well, we tell me when to stop now. Right. Abby Titmus. Oh God, that's going to be awkward. <laughs> All right, I'm sending it. That's fine. <laughs> right, John, you do it now. Yeah, I've done it. Mine's a cracker. Who have you sent yours to? Nick Hill. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> He's a promoter. He is a promoter. I. That's I'm, me not working in the Gloucester region ever again. I've got uh, John Oliver, who uh, works on the Daily Show. Oh, that is cheating. <laughs> no, it's not. He's a good friend of yours. I've Send just had a text. Your nan. I've just got a text here that says, You about monkeys. Oh, jeez. Uh, which is quite nice. That's from Sam. Right. Well, that's oh, gone. right. So you did your mate, and you did Russell, and I've sent it to a guy who books gigs. So we're having a little <laughs> bit of fun now, and suddenly my career's over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you've planned all this before, haven't you? You'll never work in Gloucester again, John. On, and Cheltenham, and Stroud. <laughs> Goodbye. John's actually fiddling with my mic, um, uh, because it's a bit wonky here, so I needed him to move it about. And uh, <laughs> just before the song was introduced, I went, Hey, John, can you move that mic? So John stuck his tongue out and did what I can only describe as a sex in face. And started <laughs> going, uh, uh, Which is lovely, just to do that just before you're about to back announce the song. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, we've had some amazing texting um, about the little games you play. Me and my two siblings had a game where we would stand on skateboards and row with rusty poles pretending to be pirates. Two trips to A&E in one week, which is quite nice. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, this is a great text. Russell Howard, in capitals, um, which always makes you think, oh, I'm going to get told off. But no. My brothers and I used to pile all our mattresses up at the bottom of the stairs and then gradually work our way up the f flight until we... What? I don't really understand what that is. Yeah. Is that, I used to slide down the stairs on a mattress or in a sleeping bag. No, what they do is pile it up and then climb up the edge of the stairs. So they do it up the side of the stairs, put loads of mattresses, and then right. n don't have to get up the stairs that way. See, they're, they're missing out of the fun. Is surely put the mattress at the bottom of the stairs, <laughs> land on mattress safe. Surely that's a lot more fun. You would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> there are land some that you safe. never tire of. Like I would, I would slide down the. When we move, we're moving out of our flat at the end of next month. I guarantee to get my mattress down the stairs. I'm just going to slide down all the stairs. That's a difficult one to slide down though. That can because. Not that I, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not that you've thought this no, through. No, not that I've done it. You'd have to have buffers. Last summer, well, that that first bend, you can go careering into that, <laughs> I imagine, and you can hit yourself quite hard and go help me, and then realise no one else is in. Um, this is not quite a childhood game, uh, but as a teenager, I used to brighten up my mornings by putting as many packs of airwaves gum into my mouth <laughs> as possible at once. That's pretty cool. Oh, this is a bit sinister. Wow. I'd practice holding my breath and lay on the sitting room floor, and when my mum walked in, I'd hold my breath till she'd, <laughs> till she'd be shaking me, <laughs> thinking I was dead. Lovely little prank in the morning. <laughs> Imagine that. That is horrific. That's the kind of thing you do, Sam. Damn straight. That's horrific. Oh, that's, that's... oh I'd never do that. That's, <laughs> that's properly naughty. Oh, that is naughty. But you you couldn't do that because by the time you're really holding your breath, you're going, <laughs> and they would know that you were alive. This is a really great one. Me and my bro used to play Frank Bruno kickboxing. We would lie under the covers opposite ends of the beds and kick each other frantically. I don't know what that's got to do with Frank Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> but they've, they've just given it a name. He it's probably like, did it in his difficult period. It's like it's been endorsed. What a difficult period as well. That is, for me, that's, that. you know, I don't want to make light of uh, mental health, but he when he got better, Frank Bruno, because, you know, he thought he was Frankie de Tory. Yes. That was it. When he got better, he must have had a laugh at that. When somebody's gone, oi, Frank, you know, you thought you were Frankie de Tory. You know, he would have, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> now put your pants on. Let's go to Asda. Never had fun. Right, um... <laughs> Poppy Hockey here. Um, this is only playable in November. You take apart two Remembrance Poppies and use the green stick and black puck. It's what they would have wanted. <laughs> oh, in Lancaster. Very good. That's super. Also very useful for mice, I imagine. Um, we've got another one here. After my brother smuggled tons of fireworks back from France, he and I played Banger Surprise. This is, It's great that you always give it a name as well. Like, we had a game in Spain that we played on Lilo's. We had to throw a ball and hit the edge of a swimming pool, and we called it Po Lilo. And there were points deducted for homophobia and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you lost a lot of points for that. 
I don't think you won a game due to homophobic deductions, did you? <laughs> well, was very good as well. We, we, we actually had a, a sub. So you scored a point if you hit the ball on the edge of the swimming pool. It was like Kirby, but in a pool. It was. It was just a lot like, you're playing Kirby, you're riding bikes. And we did that. <laughs> but we had an extra point deduction if you saw the other player's bum. <laughs> but the only way you could lose that point is if you screamed at the top of your voice, Anus! <laughs> so there were people kind of nearby watching us. Let's be honest, grown men throwing a ball at each other and every so often go, points deducted for homophobia, anus! <laughs> the first thing was, I would shout points deducted for homophobia and you would shout something homophobic for the joke. Yeah. This is where your, your comedy comes ahead of competitiveness. It doesn't for me. I wanted to win, but yeah, you wanted to have a laugh. But that's the great thing. So, so I was like, I, I dressed up to make myself <laughs> look silly, trying to entice John into abusing me. He wouldn't. You could see his little brain go, that's what you want me to do, isn't it, Howard? <laughs> but I'm going to win this Polo Island. <laughs> Have we got any others? Have we got any boys? Yeah, there's Leftover Quality Street and Rose's Guess Who, played by Jack in Chichester. Apparently you pick out the leftover Quality Street after Christmas. Yeah. Absolutely have to call it beforehand. Sweet. Pull it out, eat it, rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got to, I've got one nothing, that you two can have a game sounds, of now. Nothing sounds like rapid fire in your voice there, does it? Do it. Rapid fire. Quick like. Don't dally around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You dwell now, it'll be too late. What was yours? Well, I've got one you can play now, the two of you. It's called The Random Game. You have to say something, a word or a couple of words, and I've just received a text message while I was reading that, which is probably from a promoter telling me he's forwarded my message on to everyone else in the world. <laughs> uh, you have to say a word or a couple of words, and then the other person has to say something totally unrelated to what the person before has just said. It's okay. really hard. Okay, hit me, Sam. Sponges. Clogs. Death. Monkeys. Fish. Oh, Monkeys is related to fish, sure. Damn right. it. Okay. I was just about to say chips. I won. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to six music. Yeah. Although well, I, I tell suspect you what, a lot of you have probably just turned off. Absolutely. They, on, uh, what, you wouldn't have turned off uh, if you'd just seen, as John was saying that, he was actually playing oh. with his balls, which was lovely. <laughs> Style, you can't do verb. anything in this studio. You can't grab your chap and go, you're listening to six music. I didn't say that, <laughs> did I? You say that. And when you're not sneezing, burping or swearing. Which is all fine. I swore. Oh, it's all fine, but I can't scratch little Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I swore once. And you do this on a regular... I oh, think, that's not true. I think you might have a bit of a thing. Whenever I say six... I have got a bit of a thing, yeah. It's whenever, been I said. S- whenever I say six music... <laughs> <laughs> There's a tendency for you to scratch yourself. <laughs> we could have some fun with that. Just you getting fitted for jeans. Oh, do you like those jeans? They're very nice. Hey, fitted hit... for jeans? Yeah. What world are you living? Oh, have you not heard about that? Yeah? Oh, yeah, you get fitted for jeans. When you start doing panel shows... Are you touring with the Eagles? <laughs> <laughs> I hate the Eagles, man. Right, so, we had some really good ones. Uh, oh, this I is need from... to scratch now and I can't do it well, because don't... I know you'll... Don't jump up and down on your seat and make it all jiggle about. That's not going to do us any good, is it? Right. Me, stop it. I can see you. What are you doing? <laughs> You're hunched up again doing your allotment pose. My initial scratch made things worse. And now you I'm don't in a get lot this, of trouble. You don't get this on Wogan. Oh, let's just have a little bit of play with my balls there. Oh, Wogan no. does do it, but Wogan's mate, uh, Dedico, doesn't go, Oh, I noticed you're playing with your balls there, Wogan. Yeah, it's because before He I, just lets it go because he's a professional. <laughs> before I Wogan goes, Hey, during this next link, I'm going to have a rummage around. If you make one comment, I'll eat <laughs> I'll kill you. Um, That's how you get on Radio 2, by not talking about your walls. Look at Russell... Br- oh. <laughs> now, this is from Gavin in, uh, in Northwich. Me and my brother used to play Blind Ninja, where we would blindfold each other and fight until someone fell off the bed. We played a similar thing with my dad, my sister and my brother called Get Out of My Bed and Into the Sharks, which is where you'd have a fight in the bed, and if you got pushed onto the carpet, that's where the sharks... Um, you know, lived, and we'd sing a song whilst fighting, which went, Get out of my bed at the end of the sharks. Um, Russell Howard, oh, this is from the people earlier, Anna in Newcastle, uh, we would jump from the top of the stairs onto the mattress, of course, you got that wrong. Sorry. Um, got another one here. Um, my, oh, no. <laughs> oh, how weird is this? We got one from uh, Sudarshan in Wilsdon. Hi, guys. Do you think hypnotism works? <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know what that's about. Maybe she's got, like, voodoo dolls to us all. That'd be quite scary. Maybe that's it. Maybe she's got, like... Hey, maybe she's hypnotised me somehow so that whenever I say six music, you start rummaging about with yourself. This is a bit freaky. Ghosts at play. First ODP, now this mess. Have you got any others? Um, yes. There's a, there's oh, a, before you do that, sorry to... to that was really... But this is the best... I think this is the best email we've ever had in, right? This is from Jane in Knoll. 
Um, she plays a game called Sausage and Chips, right? This is a tickle game invented by my son Noah. Each word is a signal for me to tickle him in a different way. There are about 20 agreed signals, including chips, kissing his face, sausages, blowing raspberries on his tummy, spaghetti hoops, tickling his ears, beans, where you pretend to eat his toes whilst chanting, yummy, 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 beans in my tummy. How lovely is that? If you read this out, could you please ask Andreas if he wants a cup of tea? He's painting Noah's room. Andreas, do you want a cup of tea? Good. That's from Andreas Jane. Andreas and Noah. Yeah, that's from uh, Jane in Knoll. It's the best email we've ever had. Well Absolutely. done. What have you got, Sammy? There's a person here, Kate in Wales, who plays the same game I do. The pickpocket game, where you try to open friends' bags and steal items without them noticing. Ten points for an item and a bonus 50 if you're able to get the whole bag off them. Sounds impossible, but it has been done. Apparently. We used to do that in, uh, in IT. Um, we had like a double IT that would be before lunch and, and afterwards. And our friend Swank uh, used to have a, an immense uh, lunchbox. God, there's a better way of putting that. Um, and uh, what would happen... I can't um, believe you had a friend called Swank. Yeah, who had a big lunchbox as well. But uh, what would happen, Todd would be next to him and Todd would take his lunchbox out of Swank's bag and uh, then he'd take something and pass it along. And because Swank had so much food, literally everyone would kind of go, oh, yeah, yeah, chocolate bar, that'll do me. Eat your next couple of sandwiches. So it made its way around the entire class, and he didn't find out. He found out about six months later, but he used to get really annoyed with his mum. like, every Monday, just get a pair. <laughs> Rubbish. Have you had an email? from him? the north, was he, Swank? He was, yeah. Really? His dad used to play for Castleford B, and he had a boat called Puffin Boots, and he used to put blasted antifoul on it. He was my best mate at school. Huge, six foot five. Oh, you named him. Yeah, he used to get bullied, right? He was so big. He used to get bullied by the kids in the year above. And they used to try and beat him up, but he was so big they couldn't <laughs> break him. It was fantastic. They just literally, but you know when you see like lions trying to bring down like, uh, like a hippo or something like that? And, and they're really, really trying. I don't think you see that that often, if I'm honest. <laughs> I should have maybe picked a different beast, but a big beast, um, like a baby elephant or something like that. And they can't bring it down. It was a bit like that. And they walking just give up school. and sort of wander away. Yeah, but they used to go, get him, get him. Stop it, lads. Come on, you'll tire. You'll tire easy. And they just fell off and he walked to his lessons. Brilliant. What have you got, mate? I got one in from Keith. Uh, hi, Russell. Enjoying the show, as usual. Usual, usual. Uh, he's spelling, put a couple of S's in there. He meant usual. Time. Most details would let yeah. it go, but not me. Uh, <laughs> my game used to be making maca moose, which consisted of filling my tractor trailer with mud, sand, leaves, anything else I could lay my hands on in the garden behind the shed, yeah. then adding some wee, mixing it all up, and trundling around the garden on my tractor. I'll point out at this age, it's probably clear that he was a child and not a farmer. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it's organic. You just had a slash in it, farmer. Giles. So I got it. And then he would try and sell it to his older brother and sister. They never brought it, but I enjoyed it, mind. So I'm guessing he's from Bristol because he's written, I enjoyed it, mind. It's a pretty Bristol construction, and I enjoyed it, mind. That's a very big uh, Bristolian thing to do as well. Ain't nothing like weeing on leaves. Macamoose. It's a very. <laughs> very <laughs> so you think that's going to be like, you know, a little game about involving Apple Macs or something like that, but no. A little he... game involving Apple Macs. Yeah. Well, Mac and Moose. Yeah, maybe like hitting a moose with an apple mat. <laughs> yeah, that classic game played all throughout the West Country. Yeah, maybe attaching, um, and there are similar variants. You can play iPod moose, which yeah. is great. You have to get as close to a moose as possible and put iPods into the moose ears. And the new, more difficult game, Nano Moose. Nano That's moose. a real precision That's, game. Is that, 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 and people have misinterpreted that, and uh, unfortunately, we've lost several grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And that's the subsequent great, what's Nan saying from within the bowels of the moose? Yeah, there was an old moose who swallowed my nan. <laughs> He's dead now. Some farmer shot him and then weed in a trailer. What, what have you got, Sam? Uh, I used to sit next to my brother on the kitchen floor and we would have our backs against a washing machine when it was on and make really weird noises. The best noise wins, according to him. I managed to gain the nickname Zanussi because of the make of our washing machine. So it's basically sitting against a washing machine and making strange noises. Housewives do that. Um, I've got one here. On a bus or tram that has a rotating circular hinge enabling the bus to go around corners. Stand with one foot on the circular bit and one foot on the non-moving bit. Bus surfing, my friend. Do not hold on. Simply serve surreptitiously, pretending you are not surfing at all to the other passengers. See how long you can go without tumbling and without anyone else noticing you're playing the game. Sue. Brilliant. John was handing out cakes to everyone in the uh, in the studio, which is very nice because he's a lovely, wonderful person. But I don't really like him. Just took some cakes for Imran for the music show at one o'clock. Pop them down there to the guys. Hey, so let's play a game. Seeing who's <laughs> go around the studio now to to everyone around the office, just offering a cake. 
<laughs> that could be our game. You've got to go now, right? In this... I've already given everyone. No, a no, pick. no, you haven't. Just go oh, into no, the. Oh no, I don't know those yeah, guys. That's the, but no, be I'm the... not walking in there because they're recording. If <laughs> they're doing like a piece with Bob Dylan, right. live on the air, and then you hear a guy walking up, oh, that's a cake. That would be I great. I love a cake, but I'm in the clean. <laughs> that would be great. Girls, a tough time. A lot, lot of weird stuff going on. Hey, up, Bob. Hey, stop moaning. <laughs> Here, have one of these. They're right nice. Who the hell was that? A lot of men, a lot of people buy cakes. <laughs> <laughs> right, give it I've the Sam. I've given everyone a cake. Give it to Sam. Sam, Sam, give Sam, take that cake, go next door to that man. There's uh, two cakes in there, Sam. Yeah, and go in there, and I want you to hug him and give him a cake. <laughs> now, I mean, this isn't great radio, but it's going to make me laugh a lot. You have to do something for yourself. I'd have taken the other door, Sam. <laughs> 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 Again, not great radio, but there are two doors. Well, I wanted a bit of a walk. Yeah, you know, well, see, I could do voice but Yeah, you could. Right, here we go. To be this is uh, this is a bit of commentary. Me and John will do this. Uh, Sam is uh, entering both the room. Looking towards the Somebody's door. Somebody's doing a pre-record. Sam's wandered in. He's not looking in. Oh. Yeah, he's holding the cake up to There's the person. No, no he has to so hug. Far. He has to hug. He's, he, he's put a <laughs> thumbs up, but that is enough. He's offered another cake. Come on, Too Sam. So if you don't hug, you're not coming back in. If you don't hug, you're not coming. Get, hug them. Hug them. Hug them now. He's now just chilling out in their <laughs> studio. Sam's been signed up to another show. We've lost Sam. Sam's lost. Right, John, we'll split the money. <laughs> All right, then, cool. Brilliant. You listen to John and, <laughs> <laughs> John and Russell here. Right. Um, if we had a, and He's really let us down there. He should have hugged them. That was the game. Right, uh, I've got another one here. Oh, Russ, dear Russ, at about the age of 12. Russ, dear Russ. Yeah, Russ. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, we used to uh, play uh, chicken, the width of a football pitch, using bows and arrows. Paul in Chelmsford, that's fairly terrifying. You had one, didn't you, mate? Oh, I had a really want <laughs> one here, right? When I was at school, my friend and I had this James Bond-esque game where you had to navigate the corridors, ninja style. Fair enough. Making sure that you hadn't been seen or in any way detected by the other pupils. I was really good at it, but I did go to a school for blind kids. And I can see, but it's harder than you think. I swear some of those kids had some crazy kind of heat-seeking capability. The twist, whoa, twist, though, was that you had to make sure none of the cool kids caught you pretending to be a ninja, because then you just look like a fool. I'm not sure any of that story is true. I've had one in for... Oh. Surely, if there's a school for blind people, if you can see, that's not fair. Well... What do you mean, well? You're not allowed. I'd be, I'd be really, n you know, miffed if uh, my uh, my kid was at a blind school and some kid who can see is there. <laughs> Where do you want me to go with this? When you look you... at me with those eyes, having just said that, what what would you like me to say? I just think, I just think that's if 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 that's a lie email, that's a naughty lie email. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Let's yeah. move on to one. Uh, you had a great one, hilariously you? titled "Baby Bowling." Yes. Uh, it starts with the words "simple game," full stop, which makes me think that Kev, who emailed it in, is probably a cockney who sits in a pub going, "Here, fellas, simple game." Go right. on, go on, Dave. <laughs> Where we, right, basically, brackets, basically me, 41-year-old, father of three, hey, proud, pay me taxes. You're doing a lot for yourself, are not you? pay me taxes, and you what? can't do any more than that. I said, getting old of a an old electrician these days. Go on. Don't get me started, mate. Right, simple game. Yep. Slide me three-year-old son down our 20-foot-long kitchen 20 on his foot. back. You're doing all right, you're 20 foot. Laminated that myself, mate. Wallop. Laminated that myself. Wallop. Slide him down on his back into a pyramid of empty squash bugs. <laughs> That's great. And then he's put, he loves it, just in case you think it's uh, it's not fair on the kid. The trouble is, there's that thing, isn't it? You, that, that is fun, and he's clearly going to enjoy it, but there's going to come a time when maybe he gets a little bit drunk. And he, f and he comes out and goes, Tim, what I'm going to do now? I'm going to go and bowl my kid. Yeah. But because he's a little bit drunk. I could get some curl on this. When you're drunk, you don't really know how you're behaving. And he'll probably go, only eight. Right, let's do it again this time. Let's really knock him over. Because <laughs> when you're drunk, you can do silly things. John, I believe you've had an oh, email. I've had an email in from our flatmate. It says, tell John I'm sorry for waking him up by singing last night. Thanks, John. Uh, it's a little bit late, to be honest. Uh, and when you say singing... I came downstairs to find you lying on the living room floor shouting the words to songs, which isn't singing, unless you're into rap. Hey, we've got a guest. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There he is. <laughs> Hi, do you, do you want to tell Imran him? from the Music Week. Hello. Right. Now the reason Imran's here is because the uh, who we just had on. Who's that lady? Charlotte, Charlotte Hadley. <laughs> Jinx. That means you can't talk now. Until she's on your show, isn't she? Name. Yeah, she's on the show at uh, one o'clock today. Uh, with loads of other people. Alan McGee's coming in. Yeah. He's good. Alan Ooh. McGee, Godfather of Indy, signed Oasis yeah. and that. All right, cool. And Shikari will be on the phone. Um, what else? Holloways are coming in to play a live song. They're going right. to play a cover for us in uh, conjunction with this whole Six Music cover lovers, Mr. Cover Vote Lover for thing. your favourite cover. Yeah, like, vote for your favourite cover. Gary in fact, Jules. In fact, I don't want to, uh, like, jack your texting 
time. Right. Right. But if you text in on 64046, yeah. uh, which David Bowie song do you want the Holloways to cover between one and two? And why? Then we'll make it happen. Make it little dreams come true. Yeah, he called me Ad Ben earlier on. I did, yeah, yeah, I know, and I didn't pick up on it because I didn't want to create tense airtime. Yeah, no, no you should let's do I it should now. Probably- all right. Is oh, your, this is why he's come back in. Same. Is that why you brought no, that No, oh, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. It's your brother for, as well, you know. <laughs> Literally. But you do look very similar to your brother. No, I don't. We look completely different. No, you, well, if you put glasses on, you look like him. No, we don't. We've got different dads. Well, thank God you've come into the <clears> show. No, we haven't really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You haven't, so you've literally <laughs> wandered in went, uh, on our show, is the text, he's a racist, see you later. <laughs> Son of a we're talking about fun games that we, we play when we're bored. What do you play? Swapping positions with your brother and tricking your mum into thinking you were the same person. No doubt, A. Russell. Hey. Uh, what games do I play? When I'm bored, yeah. um, I generally am usually quite... I don't know, I'm usually quite busy, so I don't really uh, have time. Yeah, oh, listen, you normally, people make me sick. Normally quite busy. Usually I'm writing a radio show or, you know, <laughs> eating cakes that I got for free. Were you eating your cakes? Oh, I did. I wasn't too sure about that oh, cake. Yeah, I so liked yeah. it. No, I appreciated it. Yeah. No, it. No, hear me out. I appreciated it, but it's one of those little cakes that, you know, you used to have when you are younger, like, uh, like, fairy fond- cakes. They're like fairy cakes or fancies who are, like, essentially pumped full of E numbers and... Do you know what I mean? They're as, not a kid, really... you, as a kid, you hate those things. Look at you. Gen- I didn't hand it to Mother you. Mother, these are I used to be poor. I've moved on. Oh, I don't eat that kind of thing anymore. We've had an email in from someone saying, uh, Hi, Russell, we've been looking at the webcam. Uh, we've seen what looks like a yoghurt pot next to John. Can you clarify? Can clarify, that's an apple muller rice that I bought <laughs> on the way into the studio this morning to, uh, to have for my uh, 11sies. Uh, it's that, now ten past twelve. I'm not sure if I want them all. Right. Radio I've had four de- cups of tea. Radio detectives. That's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> they've also noted that they like your t-shirt, cool. and you don't dress like you're from 2001 at all. Someone else texted in to say that you were wearing that t-shirt on Mock the Week this week, and is it the only one you own? No, um, I was wearing a different t-shirt on Mock the Week. I also had uh, an email on my website that said, "Hey, mate, you're funny and all that, but next time you go on TV, how about you buy one of these?" And there's a JPEG. And you click on it, and it's like a Gillette thing, so I was obviously sweating quite a lot, which is quite nice. Um, I've got one here from David Miller. Uh, Russell, you mentioned Lions versus Hippos in your show, and that reminded me of my friend Jeff, who had a long-running argument with another of my mates over who would win in a fight, Lion or a Hippo. This caused a major rift between our friends, each taking sides. Eventually, Jeff emailed a selection of academics to find the answer. As you can see from his website, he got a response. And we actually found that, right? It's really great. They sent it off to... Um, some academics in Cambridge, which was quite nice. Um, he, he sent it off, uh, his head boy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Professor Burroughs forwarded it to the entire Department of Zoology in Cambridge. Although we don't know for sure, and current legislation prevents us from conducting any experiments to find out, it is a consensus view of the PhD students in the Museum of Zoology that the hippo would win. Hippos are surprisingly agile and fast on land. The bite they can inflict is extremely powerful, and they have the size advantage over the lion. There you and go. you can't test it. Political correctness gone mad. Although that would be good, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Much as we should get that bloke out of gladiators from retirement. Hippo, ready! Lion, ready! <laughs> They've also passed the email on to a hippo expert in Germany. Um, oh, for some reason, I've just got an image of him living in a cave. I've no idea why, but I just... Hello, welcome. He's a hippo expert to see if he can shed any more light on the problem. And we've got his response. Uh, uh, read your query to Professor Burroughs concerning a... A conflict. what? Uh, con- concerning a confrontation between a lion and a hippo, I have witnessed interactions between the two species in Uganda on numerous occasions. Don't show off. The hippos always ignore the lions, which moved out of the way. Elsewhere in Africa, there have been reports of a pride of lions harassing a solitary hippo and eventually killing it, but a single lion would not attack a hippo. If it did, it would be bitten in half within a few minutes. Best wishes, Keith. I didn't Wish think it. the expert was going to be called <laughs> Keith. <laughs> You've got f- like, I don't want to p- pick up a theme, but like, yeah. according with you confusing me and my brother... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier on, you're saying Germans only liver and yeah. Uh, yeah. biscuits. Or Where you going? And now this? you're saying they live in caves. Yeah. No, I imagine that man lives in a cave. You see the- yeah, I see who invited this punk? He's not called yeah, Darian yeah. Dreamboat for nothing. Is there some way we can turn his mic down? Uh, Fine. He's, he's the air. <laughs> he's turning into more. Yeah. Oh, he's throwing his cans on the floor. Yeah. You're listening to World of anything. Hate. Go on, you're listening it. to that right, show. Go oh, he's he's going to pretend to walk out of the studio. Well, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, coming up in the next hour, some deep philosophical chat about issues. Uh, oh, he's You're just listening to the John Richardson show. Trying to look at oh, he's done two fingers up, and now he's taking his top off. <laughs> it's quite See, buff, look at that. Even though he's out of the studio and he's making a big thing of it not being his show anymore, he still wants it to be about him. The most so embarrassing he's bit. His top off. So the I'll mo- talk. If you really want to leave the studio, Russell, get yourself out of the building. <laughs> get on the tube. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Right, he's actually done it, which is slightly tense. The most embarrassing bit will be when he comes back in. 
Yeah, it's going to look pretty sheepish. You're down right. £5.10 for a travel card now. That's a real gesture. And it's £5.10 to get across the bridge into Wales now. And it's been four ninety for ages. Yeah. And because we live in Bristol, I've been looking at it thinking, eh, it'll be £5 before long. But I won't mind that because then you're not messing around with the change. Yeah. Five ten's a real gesture that says, why don't you walk around with change in your pocket all this? You know, like that. You're putting real, <laughs> real anger <laughs> upon them there. Yeah. <laughs> that it's the people in the booth. Hey, let's put 10p and we'll just keep the rest. Well, you would. four ninety though. You'd go a fiver, wouldn't you? Because if it's a fiver, yeah. you're thinking as a customer, you're thinking, well, it'd be fiver for ages. But 510 says, well, it'd be 550 next year. Not really a customer, though, are you? Yeah. I rate the bridge. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, very good. <laughs> um, a thousand hack comics. I tell you, you have to pay to get in, but you don't have to pay to get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So, um, hey, I take that links in quite ni- nicely to what you do if you were God. So I'm guessing the first thing you do if you're an all-powerful deity is uh, make price changes on the uh, seven bridges. Well, bridge. the first thing I would do if I was a deity on that subject is I would build roads out of stuff that lasts and doesn't need repairing every year, so you have to pay a toll. And I'd just build roads out of stuff. And instead of toll booths on motorways, I'd have DJ booths. And when you get on the motorway, they ask you where you're going and what reason you're going there. And then they pick you a, a little track list for you to listen to Lovely. for your journey. They actually have, they, there was, you know that chicken soup for the soul? Uh, one of those kind of, you know, hey, these people did this. There was a story about a guy in, a, in a, one of those booths in America who used to dance in it all, night, all day. Kind of, so you, you pop up and you kind of go, just go over the bridge. Okay, if I, I'm so excited. Ooh, wee. And he'd like do all these kind of choreographed moves. And basically the upshot of it, he danced and danced and danced for four years in that little tiny booth. And he's now a backing dancer with, uh, like, Madonna or someone famous. So it's one of those, so you two can achieve your goal. <laughs> but you think, four years dancing in a booth. <laughs> and his know, life is hell now. Absolutely. You know, and if it, he's backing dance yeah, from Madonna. You should see him dance. He can only dance within a four-by-four four radius. He's got nothing. <laughs> that third year must have been tricky. There's got to be a moment when you go, probably stop now. Yeah. But oh no, I'm so excited. Woo wee. So that's what you do if you were God. It's re- that was a lack of foresight, wasn't it, by, uh, by by the government. Last year it was so hot that the roads melted. Mm. And you find yourself going, Come, really? What was it made out of? Chocolate. Really? What do you, just chocolate, red loads of chocolate. How about you, Sam? What would you do I'd if you were God? I'd take my lead from Shane Warne and I'd remove the link between physical fitness and sporting excellence. Mm. It, it'd be incredible. You'd, you'd have Maradona making a comeback, Real Madrid's new son. Signing would be Fat Dave from the Horse and Crown Rovers. It'd be a, you'd see you'd see uh, Handy Jez knocking out Audley Harrison. You could go on. Ropley could win the European Cup. We might win the World Cup. I could win something. Ropley might win the World Cup. A village in Hampshire win the World Cup. That'd be a turn up. Yeah, could, if I was God, I'd make it an independent state. Of course. To be fair. Cricket's not a sport, is it? No, I'm with if you. You're on honest. That. Yeah. Although I'd have you darts ain't a sport either, and you're a big fan of that. I like darts. Now, um, no, it's not. Well, we had a big argument the thing with my I've, mates and I about both what playing is a with sport. Fire, the though. dictionary definition is anything that requires physical exertion mm. and as a winner. In your case, shouting is a sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I am world champion. <laughs> yeah, yelling at the telly. <laughs> and it's a very tense day here. We've got John Richardson. He's uh, going to go for his first move. <laughs> MTV. This could be oh. interesting. What are you doing on Rod? Oh, very and good. Russell Howard is watching Sweet 16. This is his key round. Okay. He can score big here. And what's he doing? His tongue's just hanging out and he <laughs> seems to be enjoying it. He really hasn't got the game here. Okay. John's second move. What's he going to go for now? Frost. He's got his little grey suit on. He's nodding. He's <laughs> spitting. That is bonus points. You like Sweet 16, don't you? I'm a big fan of it, yeah. Every episode exactly the same. Gets me angry, though. I like it. Yeah. It's just, it's, if you haven't seen it, it's a programme on uh, on MTV where they get these ridiculously rich kids to have a really lavish uh, party. It's horrible. It's the same but, every week, though. They, they always a band, but then the band cancels and the girl <laughs> cries. Do. And yeah. then their dad takes them to buy a car and he won't let them have the car they want. They have yeah. to get another brand new yeah. car, so they cry. And then and it, at the end they cry because they got the party and it was really good. And it always makes you angry. And, but what's great is there's always some liggers who turn up who have, and this girl gets really angry. Yeah? They're not supposed to be in my party! And there's just these really cool <laughs> girls just kind of going, yeah, we just turned up and that, we was a free party. Get out of my party! What are you doing at my party? Daddy, I wanted a horse made out of gold! You'll get your horse made out of gold, don't worry. It's just good TV, it makes you it's very terrible angry. TV. I'd rather watch that than anything with Vernon Kay in. Like that programme with That's him. exactly the sort of thing Vernon Kay would introduce. They would. Sweet 16 UK. Sweet 16 UK, no, I'm here with he girl has, at party. And they just biddies singing at each other. It's just like, what, did you see that programme? It was on telly.
telly a little while ago. Like, it's loads of like old people oh, Jesus, from yes, soaps, indeed, kind of indeed. when I was young, and, like singing at each other. That lazy-eyed one that looks weird, <laughs> that that played Oswald Mosley and stuff in years ago, and uh, and the big lady just singing at each other. Like, is this telly? What's happened? It's horrible. I can't believe you can't watch people sing, but you can watch talentless, rich sixteen-year-old girls cry. Yeah, but that's making and me that's angry. Good telly. That's making me angry. On, on I'll on make purpose. you angry. Oh, yeah, you almost <laughs> can cancel the Sky subscription. You can just give me fifty quid a month. I'll make you angry. Oh, right, I'll do that. <laughs> right, uh, this is what I do if I was God. Um, we could all dry ourselves at will. You know, when you're wet, you press your nose, you dry. That's the first one. Um, Didn't wh- you have touching the nose to mean something else a couple of weeks ago? I did, yeah. It's a different part of the nose. Um, right. When people get angry, they get the giggles. So you can't be cross when you're giggly. Fair point. You know when you get really angry? I'd like to hear someone try, though. Really try and scream at somebody while giggling. No, no, no. Really so that's the thing. So as, as I'm God, whenever anyone gets you know, to that level of rage, they just start giggling. And then the other person starts passing. Yours are always so nice. My, yeah. my genuine one this week was to make it legal to punch the paparazzi. And I'm just making it legal to punch them. Because oh, people keep punching them and they keep going, oh, you're not allowed to punch me. Of course you are. If you're that close to someone yeah. with no... Because it, it was in the paper this week about Kate Middleton. Yeah. That she, she came out of her house and there were 12 reporters there at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And if you could deck them, then fine. If you want to be a parasite and live by taking pictures of people, fine. But there has to be a danger element to it. And the press were making it worse by printing the price for what a picture of her would be worth. So a picture of her well, anywhere is worth seven hundred and fifty. No, no, no. It's worth a, it's worth a grand. And see, the way I thought about that is, if you were spare for change in the shop, just do a quick photo of yourself on your phone, send it in. Twenty five grand for a photo of her in a bikini. Mm. I'd do that. I'd, I'd wear a bikini, take a photo of myself at the post office. You're not Kate Middleton. Though. Am I That's not? Key. Those the key words in this are Kate Middleton. Right. Okay. A picture of you and Abby Titmus is worth fifty p. <laughs> the people I feel sorry for. Um, it's like because they said this about Pete Doherty, didn't they? Because he he always kicks him, and uh, some judge said, you know, you've got to stop kicking them because you've got to live your life, you know, in accordance. You've got to set a good example. And you think, well, come off it. If someone's taking a photo of you, no one likes having their photo taken. And if you've got it, you're right. Nine o'clock in the morning. It's, it, there's been a real trend as well of the upskirt shot out of a taxi. How you know who does that? What kind you. of? Fa- I've never done. You what do kind, that. <laughs> what kind, oh, I do. I do a pose. That'd be hilarious, yeah. wouldn't it? There's nothing sadder. The funniest, actually, uh, paparazzi story I saw. There's a uh, uh, Shazia Mirza, who's a comedian, who's uh, done quite a right-on thing about hey, women, you're allowed to be hairy. Um, in on the BBC, all well and good. But I saw you at the uh, at the comedy awards. It was really funny. I saw her with loads of paps. I'd never seen him before. So sort of girls doing that look over the shoulder. She went out, she put fake her hair underneath her arms, went in front of the paparazzi and waved a la Julia Roberts. And every time, she did it the first time, and I think Russell Brand turned up, so all the paps looked at Russell Brand and were taking photos. So she took the hair off, huffed inside, sat down for a bit, waited till Russell Brand left, then went back outside with hair again, waved. Then, I think someone else who was more famous came along. She had to pull the hair off again and go, oh, goodness Christ, what's somebody got to do? Oh, why can't a war come along so I can publicise myself again? Now, well, uh, well, well, fair point. we're not allowed to talk about cosmetic glasses. No, but we are allowed to talk about shameless promoting. Now, uh, it's time for the now news. Now my tour is coming up, but yes. first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't do, it was just the saddest thing. You just think, don't get, don't have a photo taken like that. Just, just have a normal photo. Anyway, here's the news. Hopefully there'll be nothing about hairy women. You know, it's been like... <laughs> a yeti has been shot. Yeah, a hairy lady was attacked yesterday and stuck to Velcro. Let's make it heartwarming. There's a really lovely story this week. Did you read about this? About a German lady who took a photo of a man on the tube and then sent his image all over the world to try and find him. They found him and they're both single. Uh, how great is that? And they're going to fall in love, I reckon. That's truly It's in the metro. It's a really great story. Um, you know, but it's quite terrifying because you can do that as a lady. But, see, I, I, I sort of think, think two ways in this because... When you're on a train, you're supposed to fall in love. That's what happens, isn't it? You sort of look at you look at every girl. Like yesterday, I saw a girl. I'm pretty much fell in love with her. She got off at the stop, and you're like, okay, maybe maybe she's not meant to be. But you give them an entire personality. Down the years, I've given. When I was at Alton College, there was girls that would come in, and we had an entire like personality where they live, what they like, you know, food, music, everything. You never talk to them, so in, in a way, it's kind of spoiling it because you take that. You take that photo, they can bit always... Bit Windy Pops there. Yeah, a bit of Windy Pops. But they can, in the photo, they can always be perfect, can't they? Mm. And then, then they when you meet so. them, how disappointing would it be if you sent that image all around the world, and then you meet, it's like, oh, yeah. It's you know, always oh, that. It's no. always that. Probably yeah. best just sending it around Germany, I would have thought, if he's on a train in Germany. Save yourself some money, love. Well, she, Just in we, case he lived in the Ukraine, I better send this to everyone in the Ukraine. The, well, this is the awkward part, and this will come from research. He was actually in London. She was on holiday in London. 
Well, then send it to London, then. That's what she did, mate. You said she sent it all around the world. She sent it all over the world trying to find him. Yeah, so, so send it to London. She sent... No, because he she might She's sending be... the picture to people in Czechoslovakia, or no. the Czech Republic, as it's now known, <laughs> and the Slovakia. <laughs> wow. To say, I've seen this guy in London, do you know who he is? And they're going, I haven't got a clue, I live in the Czech Republic. That's cost her thousands. And then she's just going to meet him. And like you email. say, she's decided he's an architect who lives in a converted barn outside London. Yeah. And he's probably just drunk and fallen asleep after going to watch Chelsea, Chelsea! <laughs> Never, ever talk to anyone. They'll only disappoint you. <laughs> John this Mollet Rice, though, is superb. I tell you what, it's, it's very funny to see a man go, don't talk to <laughs> bloody anybody whilst eating Mollet Rice. Like, mm. I really... You said so yourself, and it's absolutely true. You are a 65-year-old man stuck in a 24-year-old's body. Yeah. And you've, the worst thing is, when I'm 65, I'm going to be a 24-year-old stuck in a 65-year-old's body, and that's you, going to be far worse. When you're 65, you'll be, old swine. you'll be wandering around with your pants around, you know, like your knees <laughs> just hang, hanging low. Hey, up. I used to be on a radio moves. show. Yeah, now was was look a, at me. I was on a radio show once. Well, I've done two radio shows. As an eight-year-old, I did Rocket Radio. My mother enjoyed <laughs> it. I was a game show host in my kitchen. My friend Lee once punched my mum. These are my old nuts. <laughs> I used to do it with Russell Howard. You know, he married Princess Beatrice. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Wonder who we'll all marry. <laughs> I don't get him married. That'd be a great wedding. Just you. No, no, I don't. Sorry, it's been a massive mistake. <laughs> I can only apologise. Right, I'm off out. See ya. Let's Fally holly loo, fally diddly diddly do. If they make it legal to marry dogs, I could see me getting a nice <laughs> Labrador. Oh yeah, I saw, something, marry my dog. I saw something hideous the other day involving, not a Labrador, Jack Russell. <laughs> Anyways, probably, and my mate sent it to me. Yeah, <laughs> not the not the, the dog, it was like, look what I've done. It was like <laughs> a, an MPEG of it. And just sort of, I'm pulling well above me, wife. Yeah, and it was like, but you can imagine what it was. And... And I was disgusted, but I, but I watched the entire thing. Uh, he lifted it up at one point. Anyways, <laughs> we have a lovely uh, text here. Can you thank Jane in Knoll for my tea and tell her I love her? That's from Andreas in Knoll. Well done. We've had some horrible texts in about my belter. They have, People yeah. are being horrible. So Nice people. Rich in Southampton saw Anthony and the Johnsons live and it was almost a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> almost a spiritual experience. Someone stepped in and said, Jamie T is ace. You said Oasis were great, so your opinion doesn't count. Fair point, but you're wrong. Uh, great Fair song, point, but you're wrong. Rubbish yes. voice, Sam from Harpenden. That's wrong. How can you own a radio if you if you're that? Do you want to tell everyone what you said yeah, earlier? You had a really great suggestion I said, for what he should do. If you know so little about music, why don't you just save the money and rub your own feces into your ears? That's, that's what, what he said. I said. I pointed and I wasn't out. Going to say that, but I pointed out that would be an excellent episode of Top of the Pops. Damn when does right. this kick in and become a belter? Graham from Cambridge, idiot. Sounds like a whale with a punctured lung on a vibrating bed, Andy K. Oh, I wouldn't mind a vibrating bed and a punctured whale. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you get together with Andy K and listen to terrible music together and sit and talk rubbish about poop? Uh, <laughs> and then Ed man, Crossland has texted that him. That was a man who'd run out of things to say. Well, when you get to the end of a sentence, and I'm so angry that all I want to say is a swear word... Because it deserves a swear word, people being so wrong about music. Do and I, I don't... I, I tell you what, mate, act out the swear for us now. No, no. <laughs> I don't do physical mime. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. I'm a professional comic, mate. N not since the incident. No. What am I? Are oh, you idiot! <laughs> So oh, what God, we that just really upset me. Don't worry, mate, it's fine. You can't convert everyone. In the same way that not everyone gets angry when they arrive in London like you. No. Not everyone likes to rearrange forks. No. Not everybody likes to put uh, their clothes in a neat... Am I special? You're lovely and special. Not everyone likes to pull their jeans up so that they chafe their nipples with their belt. <laughs> that makes you an individual, a wonderful, shining individual. That's, my, wh I, that's my, why everyone likes you. belly button. That's my belly button there. Yeah, but you see what's happened there is you've tucked your little T-shirt <laughs> in. Oh, no. And, and that's, <laughs> that's lovable and adorable. I don't see the point in wearing a T-shirt under a jumper unless you tuck it into your trousers. But it's the fact that you God, have... God, I'm really old. But it's the fact that you have opinions on that, age 24, that makes you so wonderful. Most 24-year-olds put on a T-shirt and walk. You go, right, T-shirt, where does that go? Goes inside my underpants. What do I do? Tuck it Doesn't all go the inside the underpants. But then you get a draft up and you might as well not be wearing a T-shirt. I was discussing things like this at the Glee Club in Cardiff this weekend. I turned around just to see a girl do two thumbs down to all her girlfriends that she was with. Yep. Just because I was so pathetic. I can handle the hate. If girls hate you, I can handle that. But yeah. th when they just look at you and go, oh, it's a shame for you, isn't it? I, I saw someone doing that to me once. I was being oh. sick in a bin. Horrible. Yeah, well, all I do is make sure I don't get a drafty tom-tom. 
There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot wrong with it if you're putting your um, T-shirt into your pants and you turn to some girls and go, I'm just making sure I don't get a drafty tum-tum. There's a lot wrong with that. What? Well, it looks like you're a flasher. But I'm a really, protecting A girls. really meticulous one. <laughs> John Richardson's girlfriend does not get cold breasts. I'll say that. Well, I can think of no better way than uh, ending the show with that. Uh, we're all going to get tattoos made. Uh, that's the end of the show. I hope you had fun. We've had a, a good time doing it. Have an excellent Sunday. Um, we will see you next week. What are you up to this week, Sam? Anything fun? I'm going to go and perfect dictator top trumps. I'm going to have it on the website by next weekend, and it is going to be disappointing. Pop probably. it next so to my fun. fish soup recipe, which is still available on the website. Yeah, check out the fish soup or check out dictator top trumps. We'll, uh, we'll learn a lot about you. Um, <laughs> either way, maybe combine the two. Uh, here is Say Hello, Wave Goodbye by Soft Cell. Have a fantastic week and a great Sunday. See ya. Six music.